Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog for A Rogue's Odyssey. Alright, so before getting into the juicy part of the video, the first boss in the game, I started off by adding some random rocks spawning into the scenes. So I'm just adding a bunch of sprites that match the cohesion shape into the scene and I'm picking a random sprite to be visible through code, so I don't have to handpick them by myself, also adding some randomness. So yeah, that's not very interesting, but this is the Spider Queen. It's not the most creative, but it being the first boss, I feel like it's a safe bet. I can't really go all out in uh, first boss design and mechanics, I need it to be simple and pretty straightforward. I decided to not look for pixel art online and just put it in the game for this boss. I really wanted to make this from scratch, beginning with the looks. I started off by searching some references from Google and some spiders pixel art for inspiration. Put some chill music and went to town. This took me about 30 minutes to make, if you don't count the other 30 minutes that it took me to remake and scale it up since I used the wrong player sprite to compare it to, and it ended up being way smaller than I wanted. After finishing though, I'm really happy with how it ended up looking. After that, I did a bit of research to see how spiders legs look when they're walking, and I did a very simple 3 frame animation. It doesn't look very good by itself, but it works better in the game than I thought it would. I might have to improve it in the future, but for now it's a good foundation for the movement. After adding this to the game, I added all the usual enemy components, and I also decided to make bosses not collide with the player, so you don't get stuck and take multiple hits unfairly. I also made a knockback resistance stat, to allow certain enemies to feel heavier or lighter when they're hit. Alright, it is now the next day, and I'm gonna pretend like I didn't just record the last segment 10 seconds ago and that I'm not recording this almost two weeks after writing the script. Art is a lie. Art is dead. But yesterday I started coding the spider, using states to define what her patterns will be like in battle, with some added randomness so it doesn't feel too samey. I have a timer to handle some states length. We'll have her start in the idle state, and then pick a random state between chase or jump. If it picks chase, it will start the timer and chase the player until the timer times out, returning to idle and starting the timer again. Or, instead of chasing if it picks jump, it will jump to a position and then perform an attack, which means it will pick a new state from the attack states. After attacking, it will go back to idle state unless it has less than half HP, which will make her perform another final attack to add some intensity into the battle as her HP gets lower. I also added an idle animation and I started the jump animation that I'm going to be expanding on today and will be back later or tomorrow with another update, which means it's now time to put some chill music and get to work. Okay, here we are for another update. Yesterday I ended up not working as much as I'd like, but I still got some stuff done. I finished the jumping animation and added it into the game. I also coded it so it actually moves to the player's position at the jump start and added some stretching to the sprite. I will now have to remake the animation to not actually gain height because I realized that you need to do that in Godot so it actually moves smoothly, otherwise it just looks weird. After struggling a bit with a sprite layers, it is now looking much better. I also made the hit and hurt boxes deactivate while airborne and reactivate when it smashes the ground. Okay, it is now 3 days since the last update and I knew I couldn't really keep up with these daily updates, but anyway, I've been mostly working on the boss still, which is almost finished. I added both attacks that I had in mind, a spawn spider wings attack where she spawns 2 spiders with a cap on how many can be on screen, and a spawn slowing webs attack. I then had to work on making the player slow down on top of the webs and also made a shader animation for it, so you also have a visual cue. This isn't fully working as intended at the moment because it's clashing a bit with my hit shader animation, but for now I will add it to the bug fix list and move on since I've wasted enough time on it. So far I think the attacks are looking nice, I even made the boss be able to kill her own spiders if she stomps on top of them, which looks very satisfying. Finally I added a final attack which will happen after every attack if her HP is less than 50%, which I check using this simple function. Now I just need to add a death animation because I don't want the boss to just disappear like a regular enemy and maybe add an animation for the start of the battle. Alright, so I have been working on the death animation a little yesterday and the rest today. 
where I reused the regular death animation for the other enemies and made it trigger a few times across a random range within the Spider Queen's body while her death animation is playing, and also added a bunch of them when it's finished. I also made it have more blood in the final frame, and I think it looks nice at the moment. I then added an animation at the start of the battle, where I reused one of the attacks animations and some screen shake, and ended up with this result. Finally I just fought it normally a few times to see how it feels for the first boss, and here's a preview of a standard fight against it. Ok, that doesn't look half bad, and now all I have left to do is add a boss health bar, which shouldn't be too difficult. Ok, here's the boss health bar. I made it very simple and added a small skull icon, which doesn't look too great, but will work for now. And I think that's about it for the boss. Overall, I'm fairly happy with the result. Next up, I can finally rest from coding with these over 400 lines in the boss. I am looking to upgrade the player's visuals because I have it scaled up and as you can see in the outlines they don't match the rest of the sprites so I need to work it up a bit and try to get a similar result. Ok, I am now done with that, I like the look on the shotgun, I even made the player look like it's actually holding a shotgun, unlike the previous version. But the player is definitely a downgrade for me. Um, maybe I just need to get used to it, but I will probably give it another try in the future. Ok, so today I polished a little the HP bar, added a delay bar, and when the spider gets hit, this bar takes a bit extra time to decrease to the value, which makes for this pretty cool effect that I usually enjoy seeing in games. And if you keep damaging the spider, the timer keeps resetting and it catches only if you didn't do damage for 0.75 seconds I think. Um, overall this was a fairly easy thing to do. Next up I wanted to add some damage numbers that pop up on the enemies and show how much damage your shot did. This took a little more time than I was expecting as it just occupied the rest of my day, but I did manage to finish it the way I wanted. Ok, so today I added a way to have my bullets spread. I can just set the number of bullets and you shoot multiple shots at once, with a 10 degree rotation between each shot. I also changed the way that damage is handled with the player. I now have a player's base damage and I have the weapon's damage. And the bullet damage is the multiplication between these two. This way, if you get damage upgrades during the run, it will probably affect your player's stats. So each gun can feel more unique. Finally, I also added some polish when the player gets hit, with some screen and UI shake, which was totally unnecessary at this point, but I felt like working on it for some reason, and I also started working on implementing items in the game. I made this chest and added a way to detect if the player is in range to open it or not, by pressing the interact key. Ok, now keeping up with this item implementation in the game, I did some research to try and find the best way to do this and ended up going with a similar system that I'm using with my enemy room presets. I have an item class that inherits from resource and for now has a name, an image and a description. I then make a new resource inheriting from this item class and just set the item up how I want it. At the moment I only have a bullet and also made a test resource so I can make it work. My item has an array that takes item class as a variable, and I just add all the items I want there. Then, when I open the chest, I instantiate the item scene that picks a random item from the array and sets up the variables accordingly in the ready function. There's still lots to do, but I think it's a good start and I will hopefully update you very soon on how it's going. Alright, so it is now very soon, um, 4 days later, but I did manage to get some progress done. I added a couple more items to test and I also worked on the animations and overall look of picking up an item. It's not final yet, I probably even polished it more than I should, but it does look nice. I even made it so you can see the item after picked up in the HUD, and also you can hover over it to read the info. I then also started connecting the items to the actual stats of the player. I made a new items picked up scene that goes into my player to act as a kind of an inventory that handles the stat change 
changes and also saves us the item that were picked up in an array, which for now isn't really doing anything but will probably come in handy in the future. If I have some items that can only be picked up once for example I can check if it's already in the array. Finally I basically copied the way I handled the enemy presets and made the item presets and the boss presets. So I made the treasure room spawn a chest and I made the boss room spawn the boss and the other rooms just spawn the regular enemies. I also have to get back to the navigation 2D node and have it automatically cut out the obstacles in the room so I don't have to do that manually for every room preset I make. But yeah that's about it for this update. I'm reaching the point where just adding content variety will be the number one thing to do since basically I already have a functioning first floor although it has very little variety. Anyway, thank you for watching and as always, I hope that you learned something from this video. Till next time.